made it halfway at least. Uh, 30 days on the keto diet. For anyone that's new and they're like, what the heck is this? If you didn't watch the previous video, I basically punched myself, uppercutted myself, I should say, with the end of a rower. So I picked up the rower, boom! Smacked myself in the face right before yesterday's workout. It was awful. Um, but I had to keep this butterfly stitch on because it's like separating and I'm trying to let it heal, but I want to just pick it. So that's why I have this stupid thing on my face. Anyways, 30 days keto. So um, we are halfway for anyone that's new. I'm trying to go 60 days on keto. Now, the last time I did keto was when I lost, well, I should say the last time I did long-term keto was when I lost basically 100 pounds or 60-ish pounds, right? The first half. Um, I went keto for like four years. So back then it was like keto with refeed. So it wasn't like strict full on keto. So uh, anyways, 30 days, I'm gonna read off my notes. Uh, the initial thought process of trying keto, and for anyone that's you know, been watching me for years, I like to try different diets. I like to like ping pong around because I think you know, all these diets work. It's just like which one works for your lifestyle the best. So I like to try keto. But the main reason was because I want to try to help out my friend who was doing keto. And I was like, let me just do it with you. That way you can ask me questions, you can see what I eat, yada, yada, yada. I also wanted to see if you could do keto long term and have it sustainable uh, because I've always had the weekly refeed. So I've never like experienced multiple weeks of straight up keto. I want to see what that's like mentally, physically, emotionally. So that was another reason. I wanted to see if you could do CrossFit and keto because everyone's like, you can't do high intensity interval training, you can't do CrossFit with keto, you don't have enough energy, you won't recover, blah, blah, blah. You'll lose your gains, yada, yada, yada. So I wanted to put that to rest or just test that out. Um, and then I also just wanted to track my performance with CrossFit. So uh, being someone that's pretty fit with like weightlifting and strength and performance, I wanted to see what happened. Did my performance get better? Did it get worse? Did it stay the same? So there's a few reasonings behind why I wanted to do this 60 day challenge. Uh, but let me just recap a little bit uh, of the 30 days. So I might have a picture of what I looked like before keto and what it looked like now. If I do, I'll put that up. But prior to doing this keto, uh, January 1st, I went on like a pretty flexible, like 3000 calories a day if it fits your macros. Basically, you know, having snacks here, snacks there, uh, staying like 90% clean. And I was getting really, really lean just on that alone. And I was already like 193 pounds relatively lean. You can see my six pack, but I'm definitely way leaner now. Anyways, 30 days, no booze, right? No alcohol for 30 days, no sugar at all for 30 days and no like tricks or like keto friendly cookies or keto friendly brownies or um, you know, having literally anything with sugar in it. Like I'm not screwing around, I'm trying to go pretty hard on keto. Uh, like I said, like I'm doing a lot of research, I'm reading into things, I wanna make sure that I do it right and that I do it healthy because I'll get to in a minute, people do keto very, very wrong. But uh, 30 days like clean, like I feel really good and it's also kind of cool, like someone asked me about this, like maybe like can you do keto for like a little detox? And I think yes, because 30 days of no sugar basically means nothing processed, like nothing out of a bag, <laughs> Not, like you're just eating like vegetables and meat and you realize, it's eye-opening, because you realize like how much crap you put into your diet. Even on If It Fits Your Macros, which I am a huge fan of, you eat a lot of crap. You're like, well, I can fit these these uh, skinny cows in, or I can fit this halo top in, or I can fit in six Oreos. You're like, you eat a lot of crap. Um, so 60 or 30 days of like nothing and no sugar, and especially no alcohol. Not that I drink a lot, but like every Friday or Saturday night, we would go out, have a couple beers with the boys, hanging out, and going out in social events has been pretty tricky, especially the last four weeks. Every Friday we've been going out with the CrossFit crew and that's interesting. But 30 days clean, I feel pretty good. I feel like way better than I thought I was going to feel. Initially I thought I was going to be like, I'm going to die. But since I've done keto before, just not long term, I, I kind of knew what to expect. So uh, how, how do I feel? So generally, just like general 
energy throughout the day, I feel fine. Like literally no difference at all. I feel completely the same if I was on a high carbohydrate diet. Also, for anyone that's new, I was eating like five to 600 carbohydrates a day prior to keto and I was having like 40 to 50 grams of fat. So it was basically switched. High carbohydrate diet because basically research shows that if you're heavy endurance or heavy weight lifting, you need a lot of carbohydrates. So uh, I've always had a lot of carbs. So to basically fuel myself for workouts. So uh, going from 500 to 600 carbs to like 300 grams of fat and no carbs was a little bit interesting food wise, but generally for energy, I didn't felt no different. Like literally nothing felt different. Um, workout energy, I haven't decided yet really because I feel fine during my workouts, but I don't really remember what I felt like when I was doing like carb hot, like, like eating a lot of carbs and working out, uh, especially because right now the CrossFit Open is going on. There's a lot of high intensity workouts and I mean, I'm performing really well. I'm, I'm not doing awful. It's not like, wow, I suck. I'm doing really good. So it's like, I guess my performance or my energy is, is good. Like there's nothing, I don't like have days where I walk in. I'm like, like, I'm not going to do this. Like I feel fine. Um, performance. So again, with the cross open going on every year is different, but I think I'm performing really well. I don't think like, it's hard to say if it's the diet or if it's mentally because there's not regionals uh, and the competitiveness is not there, but it's, it's hard to say performance wise. All I know is that I can still deadlift the same amount. I can still squat the main, uh, same amount. I can still snatch. I can still clean the same amount. Like all my strength is still there. Nothing has decreased strength wise. Uh, endurance wise, it's kind of weird because there's, I'm not doing that many endurance pieces because it's the winter. I don't go outside and run. Uh, so that's future. I'll talk about that in a second, but all in all, I feel fine. There's literally no negative side effects. Um, the expenses of keto, uh, bunch of questions on this. So is keto expensive? Yes and no. And I think any diet is really expensive if you do that diet correctly. So if you're eating a high carb diet, I mean, obviously if you freaking buy ramen noodles and you know pasta boxes for 98 cents and just like straight up oatmeal like simple carbs like it's going to be really freaking cheap but you, you know you're buying more variety than just trying to like just get by it's going to be expensive no matter what diet you do especially like if you're going into high quality meats like i've been buying a lot of salmon been a lot of fish in general which i don't eat buying a lot of salmon, uh, cod, a lot of sardines, a lot of uh, mackerel, a lot of those, the thing, basically the thing I would say that's expensive about keto are like the things that you buy in bulk, like olive oil, avocado oil, avocados, uh, big batches of like nuts, um, coconut oil, ghee butter, like uh, MCT oils, all those things cost a lot, but they also last multiple weeks. So. I've been spending anywhere from like 60 uh, to sometimes like $90 a week, which honestly isn't bad at all. Sometimes on my If It Fits Your Macros like flexible diet, because I'm buying so many more processed foods, it's like 100 to like $120 sometimes. So it really depends on, it's expensive depending on what you buy no matter what diet is. So uh, yes, it can be expensive, but also you can get by pretty cheaply on keto. So I don't think that's really a factor. Um, Another thing that's been pretty interesting for me is going out to eat. So going out to eat, there's not that many options. It's basically uh, chicken wings, like just asking for plain chicken wings. Um, that's pretty high in fat, pretty high in, in protein. Uh, I think I had 24 wings the other night and that's like 2000 calories, uh, 150 fat, 180 protein or something like that. Um, been getting like prime rib dinner, uh, New York strip, burgers on a lettuce bun, uh, but mostly trying to go with like salads because it's basically about volume, right? So you want to get as much volume as possible. So I've been doing like really big iceberg salads or wedge salads, things like that. Things that are tricky is like the salad will sound really good. It'll be like with cranberries 
in uh, strawberry vinaigrette, something like that. You're like, um, I can't have the cranberries. Can you take the cranberries out? Can you take this out? Can you add this? Can you do this? So there's a little tweaking here and there, but basically like burgers, fish, um, chicken wings, plain are like go-tos for me the last four weeks. Another thing going out to eat that's super weird is when the, your friends or people are drinking and then you're not drinking because you're just like sitting there. <laughs> like, I guess I'll just have this water. Um, but other than that, you can, you can still go out to eat with people. It's just you gotta work around the menu. In conclusion, I found out that yes, you can do CrossFit on keto. Um, I'm going to experiment with this more uh, with endurance stuff because I think that's like a huge factor because I haven't been doing a lot of endurance, so I want to see if a high endurance, like high intensity, like cardio workouts will be a factor. Um, because last, this this week was like a lot of burpees, so I suck at bur burpees no matter what, so I don't know if the workouts suck because I suck at burpees or because I'm on keto. So uh, we'll figure that out. Keto and strength, you can still be strong and be on keto. And I think you can gain strength on keto. It all just comes down to, are you in a caloric deficit or not? So. Um, Sustainability, I think it's sustainable. I think you could do keto for a long time. Uh, big like gaps, I, I know there's people that like do weekly refeeds, bi-weekly refeeds, monthly. Uh, I think in general you could do keto for a long time. But uh, so that's the kind of recap. Basically I feel fine. I, uh, I'm trying to eat high quality foods. As you guys know, I'm full days of eating. Uh, one thing that they'd be interested in this week is I'm getting blood work on Thursday. So that's like the main thing. A lot of people are freaking out about like me doing keto and like, oh, your cholesterol and this and that. So we will find out when we do the blood work. Obviously, I don't have, well, I don't I tell you, I don't have blood work prior because I never go to the doctor. So when I'm off keto, I'll get retested when I'm on a high carb diet. But basically, we just want to see if I'm healthy. If my levels are good, then keto is good. There's no negative side effects. If my cholesterol is high, then obviously we don't know if it started out high as it is, but we'll figure that out when we get there. Um, what are my plans for the next 30 days? So uh, the next 30 days, I think uh, I'm gonna do bi-weekly refeeds. Not that I don't feel like I, I need to do the refeeds, or I, I, like I wanna do the refeeds, which people are asking me, do I have like cravings and things like that? Um, I think cravings, have been like really like when you're just hungry in general, you're like, I'm just gonna start eating whatever I can find. But if I'm hungry uh, or if I'm having cravings and I just eat a really fatty meal, I'm instantly satisfied. Or especially if I'm like really hungry and all of a sudden I have a lot of salt and, and fat, I'm like totally like satisfied. There's no more cravings at all. So I think having food on you like, like nuts uh, or seeds or go, going to get a, a coffee with cream in it, it like, you're fine. But it's like in that stage of like, you're like hungry, you're like, oh, it must be the keto. I'm like, I need carbs, I need carbs, and the people have carbs. But if you just eat, I think you're fine. Um, but there, there obviously are times, like especially going out to eat, you're like, man, everyone else is having french fries or and pizza, I wish I could have some french fry and pizza. But it's really just like, you gotta like, Remind yourself of your goals and why you're doing it. So that's with any diet, because if you're on a, a low fat diet, right, and a high carb diet, you still wouldn't be able to eat the pizza. Um, so bi-weekly cheat days, just to see what happens, because I went four weeks with no cheat days. Uh, also, my first cheat day is going to be Friday, because it's the 19.5 workout. It's the last workout, uh, or the last open workout in the current gym space because we're moving. So we're having a big pizza party and I don't wanna miss out. It's like the last thing at the gym. Uh, so I'm gonna have a moderate uh, refeed. I'll film a little bit of it, but it's nothing gonna be like a crazy, like cheat day that I usually film. Uh, so that'll be my first initial, like, or my first ingestion of carbs will be Friday. Uh, after that, I'll do bi-weekly cheat days, so every two weeks. Uh, I'm gonna add in more post-open. Post open's kind of a weird thing uh, because the, the intensity and the focus is on that Friday workout and everything else is kind of just like meh. It's like, I'm not, that's one thing I wanna talk about in a second, is I haven't been working out a lot. Um, so I wanna add in more strength, more bodybuilding, and more endurance pieces because it's starting to be spring. The sun's actually peeking through right here. Um, so I wanna add in a lot more endurance, a lot more cardio stuff, and see what happens on keto. Uh, 
after the 60 days of keto, I'm going to try to do keto, I uh, forget what it's called. There's multiple, there's different levels of keto or different ways to do keto. You can do keto with the, with the, with the cheat days, right? I think that's called targeted keto or something like that. Uh, basically, I'm gonna try to do keto all day, right? And then have, and ingest just carbs post-workout. So like, I don't know, like a half a cup of rice, white rice post-workout or pre-workout. I'm gonna have to do some research on that. So that's after 60 days. Uh, because people have been asking me, like, what am I gonna do after keto? Am I just gonna jump right back to 600 grams of carbs? And I think that's a silly mistake. So I'm just gonna slowly introduce carbs into the diet because I feel good on the high fat. So uh, that's the plan long-term on the uh, on the 60 day end, which will bring us closer to May. Uh, but as I was saying, I haven't been working out that much. So one thing, Nice about keto, I would say, is that I'm eating a lot. I'm eating 3,400 calories. Um, it's less volume of food, but I'm not working out that much and I look really good. So that's a huge benefit. Um, because you guys know, I used to work out like two to four hours a day. And I've been working out maybe an hour and a half a day, five days a week. No, 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 four days a week. Because for the last four weekends or four weeks because of the open, we've been doing Monday, Tuesday workout, Wednesday we do yoga. So that's, I mean, so we technically a workout, but not like CrossFit. And then Thursday, Friday we work out. Saturday, Sunday, we've been taking off because we've been doing work at the gym. So I've only been working out four days a week, technically at the gym, one day, one day yoga. Um, so I've been working out way, way less, only like an hour and a half a day maybe. And I've been able to maintain or actually improve my aesthetics the way I look. So that's one benefit of keto is like a lot of food or decent amount of calories and I get to do less work and look really good. So that's one cool benefit because with the keto, like my stomach is way tighter, my obliques, my love handles are way slimmer. So that's one huge benefit of this keto so far. Um, but yeah, that's, I think that's it. Oh, Q&A. There's a couple of things I want to talk about. Uh, people have been, I put it on my Instagram, a bunch of Q and A. Um, mistakes people make on keto, uh, that's what I want to talk about. One, if you're doing keto, or you're trying keto, or you want to do keto, make sure you're eating fat, because that's your new energy source. So if you're like, eliminate carbohydrates, and then you're not eating enough fat, you're gonna get the keto flu, you're gonna feel like crap, and then you're gonna give up. So make sure you're eating enough fat. I've been doing 80% fat for my macros. So 3,400 times 80, basically 300 grams of, of fat a day. So make sure you eat fat so your body can run on fat. If you don't have enough fat, you're not gonna be in ketosis, which is another thing. I've been using this like every day just to make sure I'm in keto. So uh, keto mojo. Uh, just to make sure, I like to assess, I like to get the data, so make sure you're eating enough fat. Uh, second thing, people are eating too much protein. They're like, you know, doing like a 60-40 split. And there's research out there, people are going to disagree or, or agree, but there's research out there that if you have way too much protein, like say I just have like, a, like 16 ounces of chicken breast and I don't have fat with it, that protein can get digested down into sugars and then your body uses that sugar for energy. So it turns it into basically carbs. So instead of running on ketones, you bump yourself out of ketosis and then your body turns the proteins into sugar, blah, 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 blah. So not enough fat, too much protein, which I've only been eating 150 grams of protein, feel literally no different. So that's another thing about like, people are like, well, keto is so bad for you because your cholesterol is gonna be so high because you're eating so much red meat and this and that. And it's like, I'm not eating that much food. I'm eating like three ounces of salmon and like eight ounces of red meat. And I've only been eating red meat like every other day. So, um, tja. anyways, poor food choices. People have been eating like, like when I said about the expense of keto, <clears throat> if you go cheap on keto and you're like, having canola oil instead of olive oil, if you're having like sausage and bacon for breakfast, if you're having, you know, prime rib dinners every night, if you're freaking 
scooping Hellman's, uh, whatever it's called, is it Hellman's? Hellman's freaking mayonnaise. Uh, if you're going to McDonald's, you're taking off the bun from a burger. You know, that's not the smartest way to do keto. So you wanna have those really rich sources of fats. You wanna have good sources of protein. You wanna make sure you're getting in your omega-3s, like I mentioned. You wanna be healthy. No matter what diet you do, you should be getting in the quality versus like just getting by. So uh, obviously you know there's budgets out there, but try to get in the highest quality foods no matter what. Um, not enough salt. So salt I figured out is like a huge deal because you're peeing basically all the time. Your body's not holding enough water as it is. You're already dehydrated. So you need to get those electrolytes back and you need to get the salt back into the system. So I've been putting salt, Himalayan pink salt on literally everything like in my coffee, on my eggs, on my salmon, on my chicken, on my nuts, uh, on my seeds, like salt all the time. When I don't have the salt and I don't have water, which is another thing, people aren't drinking enough water, um, like I'll, you'll feel like if you like sit down for a while and then you stand up really quick, your blood pressure is so messed up. Uh, you have low blood pressure, you like basically black out, right? You like see spots or like you're like, whoa, I'm gonna pass out. So salt and water, make sure you're having a lot of water and still having a lot of salt. I literally have been drinking like pitchers of water with a lot of salt in it. Um, not enough veggies, everyone's like, just like going carnivore style on it and just having like protein with like an avocado or like dipping their, pro their protein in olive oil and that's it. The veggies are important because one, you won't be able to poop, you need that fiber, you need, your body needs to bind that stuff in order to make poop like that, that's sign language for poop. Is that, no wait, this sign, is that sign language for poop? One of those is, uh, I know this is bullshit, right? Um, so eat your veggies, have your salt, have your water. Um, I know that a lot of people are doing like, are still trying to get like processed foods in there, like the Atkins bars and all that. And people are like, oh, there's only X amount of net carbs. It's still processed crap. Get that stuff out of there. Just go for quality again. So um, I think that's it. I think this video has probably been already like 20 minutes, but hopefully I gave you some good information. It's been 30 days. I'm feeling good. I'm feeling fine. Uh, I'm honestly have no negative comments about keto. I think you, I mean, you can pick anything out of like any diet and be like, oh, it's because of the diet, but you just, you have a regular, you know, life stress, right? You could be like, oh, I'm, I'm tired today. It must be the diet or it could be stress or you didn't sleep enough or you didn't have enough coffee. Like there's a bunch of excuses basically, I'm trying to say on any diet. So honestly though, I feel fine in keto. I don't feel anything negative. I am very curious about the endurance thing though, because Chris was like saying to me that my performance on this last workout, he's like, you didn't look like you had a push, but I don't know if that's because I wasn't motivated because the CrossFit open basically doesn't lead to regionals or it's because I actually didn't have the energy to push, but we're going to figure that out within the next couple weeks. I'm rambling. The next video will be what is the next video? I don't know what the next video is. It, the next video is something. <laughs> and then Saturday's video will be the refeed day. So come back for the refeed, because I know everyone's super excited about that. You wanna see me eat like a freaking candy bar and a piece of pizza. I know that's, you know, what I used to do, but I won't be like doing a crazy cheat day. Anyways, Ramble City, let's go. End the video, Roberto. Thanks for watching. Comment down below, thumbs up the video. I'll see you guys in Wednesday's video.